Hello. As you may or may not know, my name is Christina Timberlake and my boyfriend has autism. I want to explain something that a lot of people don't get. They say that autism is not a violent disease. And that's true. A person with autism is biologically set up not to be violent. The part they discredit and discount is that an untreated person with autism can have elevated phenytoin levels that pumps adrenaline into their system, causing them to become over emotionally reactive, hallucinating, even to the point of convulsions and tremors. What I want people to understand is I've seen my boyfriend go through several of those seizures in the emergency room. Yes, there were times that he was affected by drugs during those episodes, but there have also been times that he hasn't done anything but take his medication and the thing of it is, when they pop those seizures and start to hallucinate, he was actually convinced at one point that one of the ambulance drivers who was trying to help him was a demon trying to choke him. And he ended up punching the EMT in the face. Is autism a violent disease? No, it's not. But the seizures produced from the high phenytoin levels can cause them to hallucinate and become violent. And what I want people to understand is just because somebody wears dark clothes, just because somebody's reclusive from society, could be a side effect of the autism. But a violent rage could be a side effect of the seizures, which is a side effect of autism. Autistics are not violent and shouldn't be targeted. Autism itself is a hard enough condition without people pointing out that the shooter who went through the Sandy Elementary School Sandy Hooks to be exact had autism. It's a combination of environmental factors. He had never been violent in his life according to the people that knew him and to his own father and grandmother. He was not a violent person. What people need to understand is it could have been an isolated incident where his medication became unbalanced or he forgot to take it or his mom didn't give it to him. I don't know without speaking to his father if his mother was regulating his meds and caring for his personal needs. I can only speculate at this. If his medication levels were unstable, then yes, he became capable of murder without reason. Is it a tragedy what happened at the Sandy Hooks Elementary School? Yes, it is. But what people need to understand is the disease itself is to blame not necessarily the person with the disease. And what other people need to understand is the fact that they keep pointing this out makes it feel like they're targeting everyone that has a mental issue or mental disorder because it's now under fire if people with mental incapacities should be taken away from regular society and I find that offensive 
because I myself am diagnosed as a bipolar manic depressive. Can I become erratical, irrational, and even violent without my medication? Yes, I can. That is why I take Zoloft to help regulate my moods. And I am consciously aware of whether or not I take my medication. But it may have not been the case for Adam Lanza. When you really think about the situation and the condition, I really wish somebody would interview his brother, Ryan, or even his father, and ask, was Adam Lanza actively, actively taking part in his own medical care or was he being cared for? Because if he was being cared for and those conditions were lax, then it's his caregiver's fault the things that went on. Because they actively knew that they were running that risk when they didn't care for him. If anything, it should make us look more towards making sure that there are harsher effects for people who want to become caregivers, who are not willing to make the commitment to keep it going, or to make sure that there is a standard that people who take medication are fully aware of the side effects if they discontinue its use. By the way, also be aware that Dilantin, which is an artificial phenytoin stabilizer, also has the same effects if you don't take it as if it's overtaken. If the medication is overtaken, in other words, if Lanza became so depressed that he tried to kill himself with the only thing at his disposal, then indirectly he could have caused himself to hallucinate and see what he believed to be monsters. Because he would have believed he was in a dream state. He wouldn't have been aware that it was his mother he was shooting. He wouldn't have been aware that it was children he was shooting. I'm not too sure that I can live the rest of my life smearing someone for something they did if they weren't aware or capable of comprehending what it was they did. Because the other thing you have to realize is Adam Lanza had a full family. It might have been what society considered dysfunctional because his mother and his father weren't together but it's not fair to make his whole family sit and reanalyze what they could have couldn't have done differently to prevent it and that's exactly what's happening I just wanted to say that whatever people say after it is their own choice but the other statement I wanted to make has to do with the gun control issue Stricter gun laws only work for the honest. Just like drug laws. If you outlaw something, it only keeps the honest from doing it. So tightening down on gun ownership isn't going to stop these sorts of crimes. It's going to elevate them. Let us take our lesson from the prohibition days. They outlawed alcohol and because of that people like Al Capone you know what it's not even worth explaining the rest of the way other than to say this mobsters, villains, and gangsters became the norm when they outlawed alcohol but even the honest were prone to do dishonest things when they saw that they could make a profit from that situation. 
So if you crack down on gun laws, all you're really doing is leaving it open for someone who might never have gone to jail for anything to turn around and risk everything for that extra bit of money. Because when you really look at it, the gun dealers and the people who manufacture those guns, that's their living. Are we really that insignificant that we would deny somebody else a legal living over something that takes a little bit of consciousness? If we as legal citizens would take more care in where we place firearms and how they're kept, it's not going to do any good because locks only keep out the honest and separating bullets from a gun only stops somebody who just really isn't interested in picking one up because if you really want something you're going to search for it till you find it. Haven't you ever lost five dollars in your front room in a couch or a chair? You're willing to tear the whole house apart for that five regardless of what you want it for. People don't stop to think about that really, but they should. So this is your friend Chrissy, aka the Squeak Geek, aka Treon V here on YouTube, saying be safe America. Actually be safe wherever you are keep in mind other people's conditions and situations but don't let them override your own continue to stay the people that you are and be proud of how unique headstrong and full of heart you are don't be disheartened by things that other people do just because they did them doesn't mean you have to and I promise you things will get better Sometimes they have to get worse first, but they will get better. So remember to feel the love, rock on, and pass it on, no matter what, even if they hate you for it later. And if you're doing something right, they will. Take my word for it. Or better yet, test the theory for yourself. Walk out and find someone today that you normally wouldn't have spoken to that you'd have no interaction with whatsoever and try and strike up a conversation with them. Who knows? Maybe it'll change the world for the better. Then again, maybe it'll change it for the worse. It's a chance you're going to have to take. Because until you try, you don't know. Take care.